Welcome back to another video, folks. Um, just got to say thanks for tuning in again. It's it's really appreciated. I know there's a lot of videos out there at the moment, and maybe you're watching some others as well. But honestly, I'm like super grateful that you're clicking on this one. It, um, I've been blown away by like, the positivity and all the cool feedback and stuff. So yeah, keep those suggestions coming and uh, all that for other other videos that um, that you want to see done. I've got a flipping long list at the moment, uh, so I've got loads of time to fill as well. So that's all right. Uh, I hope you're making the, the most of your time off, whether that's just resting and relaxing or getting something done. I know some people are like busier than ever because of what's going on. Um, I've got sore fingers today. I've been training max hangs last night. It's some really good progress. I'm only training the same amount as I, I normally would, but it's kind of a bit easier when you're a bit fresher and everything. So, you know, every cloud's got a silver lining and all that. Today's um, video is going to be on a cheating way of ascending a rope, okay, without any extra kit or anything. Um, so it's all for use in emergencies and, and that kind of thing. No, 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 emergencies is a funny word, Some, just, you know, solving problems, basically. I haven't forgot that I still haven't done escaping the system part three, where we actually do something useful having escaped the system. This is another building block to all that. So watch the quick intro. You've seen it before, but watch it again uh, and then we'll crack on. Right, so here we are back on Sling Mountain, all set up and ready to go. Um, I've got a fixed line in place. Uh, I've used a slightly thicker rope today. This is one of my sort of workhorse ropes um, for when I'm out and about doing my real job on, in the mountains and all that. Uh, 9.8 single rope, uh, a bit fatter, so it will stretch a bit less. Because it's fatter, it'll be a bit grippier. So just for this demonstration, I think it will work quite well. Um, firstly, I guess, is why will we be doing this? Why will we need to ascend a rope? I guess the two main reasons are one, referring back to my soon to be coming escaping the system part three, is we've got to go down to our mate to patch him up, do first aid or whatever. And then we've probably got to get back up to the belay and do something to get off the crag, whether that's up or hopefully down. So you have to safeguard yourself up there. And then the other one is you might be, say you sea cliff climbing, you might abseil into that sea cliff. Uh, a lot of them you can't walk around to the bottom. So you'll fix a line to abseil down on. And sometimes, and this has happened to me for sure, you can't do the route to uh, you know, climb out. So you've got to somehow get out using that fixed line. And must admit, years and years ago, I've even abseiled into completely the wrong spot, right sea cliff, but wrong spot on it. And so then I've had to come out on the um, fixed line. Thankfully, that instance was only short. I have done it on a, a bigger cliff as well, like full, like 40 meters. You'll see the setup for this, it's pretty straightforward, well, very straightforward. Actually doing it is quite physical. So when you're practicing, that's the hard bit, is to get your techers right. And I'll, I'll give a few little hints and tips when I'm doing it. I'm obviously doing it on Sling Mountain. And I think this is actually quite realistic to do it like this, sort of, <laughs> kind of anyway, because actually in reality, you will be banging into the rock and stuff. It's unlikely, but not impossible, that you'll be doing it in free space. So it's great to practice it hanging out of a tree or whatever, because you get the technique dialed without banging into stuff. But make sure at some point you do practice it when you're banging into the rock and stuff as well. But without further ado, to show our little sort of cheating method, we've got to show the kind of the regular method first. So let's just crack on with that. Always carry two prosecs. You could improvise with a, a sling though. I'm going to get that join out of the way as always, and I'm going to do myself a clem heist, right? So a clem heist starts with the clean end, and I'm going to wrap it. Six wraps, whatever, just try it. Five, six, seven, just, yeah, depends on the combo. Remember I've said in other videos, these are sort of pretty stiff and relatively shiny, so uh, they sometimes need a few more. Look what I'm doing, I'm going up through the top bit and then coming down. So that is a clem heist. If you do it the other way up, it still works, right? But it's not a clem heist. So I kind of feel that doing these videos, you've got to get these things bang on or someone will go, oh, it's not a clem heist, actually. I don't, I don't know the proper name for the upside down version, but it has got a separate name. I'm going to clip this one into my belay loop. Do them up. Really important to use a screw gate for this one. This isn't one I can skimp on and use a, a snapper. Um, Right, so I've got something I can literally sit on. 
if I haven't got any rock to help me, right, I'm going to have to put a foot loop on. If I was just like climbing up here now, well, I could potentially just climb up, move that up, climb up, move that up. Okay, but let's assume that that's not quite uh, a possibility because either the route's really hard or maybe it's not even a route or, like I've said, I'm in complete space and there's nothing to pull on. So let's do it full on like we might have to and get our other prusik and we're going to do the same again, all right? Now the climb heist. Other prusiks will do for this one. I like this one to be a climb heist because it grips really uh, well doesn't release under low, so I'm not going to knock it accidentally and release it. A classic prosthetic could well work there. I just find them a bit of a pain when they're locked up to release. It's bad enough with a clem heist when you're actually fully weighting it and stuff. I'll show you how to release them a bit more easily. So I would go for the clem heist on this one for sure. The bottom one could easily be a French prosthetic, uh, a bit slippier, which might be a good thing. I'm not so reliant on that one. I'm just going to use this as a foot loop, okay, whereas this one is fully attached to my harness. I could just stand into that, but what you'll find is normally you probably want a bit of extension on there. Don't really mind what I'm using for this one, just because it's a foot loop, like snap gate, screw gate, whatever you've got. You can even lark foot this to that, that would work as well. I'm gonna do, do this way for now though. Clip that in there. I could just stand in, right? Um, that, that would work. What I quite like to do is put a, a clove hitch or a lark foot into there. That way, as you can see there, it's gripping on my foot a bit more. When If you don't do that, often it sort of falls off and it's a bit of a pain. Wear shoes when you're practicing though, because it's quite painful when you're standing up in barefoot. So you're gonna stand up into that. Okay, I'm gonna use the stairs as well, because I can. Um, I'm gonna pull up if I can. If I haven't got this, I'm gonna pull on the rope, right? And stand up, get your hips right on top of the rope, sit onto that, check it all locks. It is, good. Next up then. Well, we're gonna release this and push this one up. So the, the key is really, it's opening that up and then you can slide it, get that as high up as you can, that you can stand up again. Off you go, you stand up, right? Thumb onto that, push him up and away you go. Obviously do sort of bigger ones and I've just done, just doing mini ones because I haven't got far to go. What's really important though, is to remember that all my weight and all my safety is on just this prusik. Right? It's a good prusik, but it is just a prusik. It's relying on friction, isn't it? I'd much rather have something nice and solid to back me up. The best thing to do, I reckon, other options are available, of course, as with all these things. Oops. Take some paint off the banisters. Clovich into your belay loop. Great. Every time you go up a couple of meters, adjust it. Pull in the slack, tighten him up. Pull in the slack, tighten him up. You could do a fixed knot, yeah, that'd be safe, like a oh, hand of figure eight, but then you've got to untie it and retie it, untie and retie it. So Clovich is ideal for this one, but do put some backup on, it's super important. If I was doing this for real now, and I could, my mate's conscious and everything, we're not in a rescue kind of situation, I'm going to get them to put me on belay, and I'm going to be on a lead rope as well, and I'm probably going to slot some kit in, right? Put a quick draw in it, put my rope in it. So if all of this failed, I've got a nice backup because I can have that backup, right? I have had to do this for real in a, a relatively, ser well, very serious situation. And, uh, you know, I have done that. I've led it as well as doing this. And the reason I do that is because I had a, an instance once where I thought I was going to have to prusik out on a rope. I didn't have to, thankfully. We made it out of the route. Uh, it was my second couldn't, couldn't follow me, I thought, at one point, but they made it. Uh, so it was all good. We didn't have to press it out, but when we pulled up the abseil line afterwards, it was like shot through to the core on one bit. And I don't know why, I don't know if it had rubbed on an edge. I don't think it had. I think more likely it had been hit by a rock, okay, because of where we were. That's more likely the answer, I think. But can you imagine prusking up this and coming across this stretchy bit of core showing every time you bounce? Because you are bouncing quite a lot when you do this. It'd be well scary, wouldn't it? Uh, I love being scared sometimes, but not by things like that. Um, so by having stuff in the rock as well, if you can, great, but you're not always going to be able to. Okay. So go and have a practice of this, you know, practice it off your tree or your banisters as long as they're solid, whatever. I'd say it's pretty simple, but see if you can switch into an abseil, okay, because that would be useful, wouldn't it? It'd be a good uh, bit of thought required there. I'm not going to show you how to do it, I reckon you can work it out. Do it safely, you know, when you're just off the floor, so there's not too much jeopardy or whatever. Um, we could just... Wait that one, 
slide that, move it down a bit, etc., etc. So reverse this. It's much easier if you're going any distance to turn it into an abseil. So have a go at that. All right. Let's leave that at that for now and let's have a look at the cheating method. So give me a second and I shall derig myself off that. Okay, good stuff. So I said this was cheating our way up the road. It kind of is, but really it's just being efficient. You've still got to put some effort in, still going to be physical, right? We haven't got a hand jammer, we haven't got a gree gree with us, we haven't got pulleys with us, we've just got our normal climbing kit. But on my normal climbing kit, same as a lot of people, I have an ATC guide or a another guide plate, whatever you choose to use, right? So let's just load that up onto the rope. Put him in, clip him as you normally would. Okay. Not much use as it is, it's not really doing anything, is it? But clip that hole, clip it to there. And what have we got? We've got like a an ascender really, haven't we? We can push up on that, sit down, mega. That is a load easier than faffing with the prosec each time. It's ready to go, it just unlocks and goes. No thumbing the knot or anything, and no prosecs getting jammed up because they do sometimes, right? What else have we got to do with it? Well, what did we do before? We got a prosec and we put it on below our belay loop prosec. Yeah, so let's do the same again. Put that around, give him however many wraps you think it needs. Well, that's what prosecs do, they love to unwrap themselves. It's real life, isn't it, I suppose? Pull that, All right, that's locking up, good. What do we do next? We got a sling. 120 centimetre one, so I doubled it up. Sometimes you'll need to, sometimes you won't need to. Let's do exactly the same. Let's slide that up, make sure it's in shot. Okay, what did I do then? Well, I stood into that and I did a little uh, Clovich or Larksfoot, Clovich for me. Right, can you see the problem though? When I stand up here and I wait to the rope, I can't move the ATC in, in guide mode. It's jammed up because I'm waiting it like that. Ah, so that's a bit of a problem, or is it? Well, no, thankfully not really, because all we need to do is just change the position of it, all right, to above it. Okay, same thing's gonna happen. Give it some wraps, do a proper claim heist, because we're trying to be pro. Don't want those internet people picking up and giving me grief. There we go. Thankfully, I haven't had any of that at all, I don't think, anyway. Not this series of videos, I've had it before. And that, that's Jez's rants. Jez's rants, maybe they'll come one day, I'm not sure. I, I don't feel like they're particularly a professional thing to be doing, so I'm probably going to avoid Jez's rants, but you never know. Might get the better of me one day. This time, right, long sling, properly long sling this time. Put me a little Clovitch or Larksfoot, whatever your choice is. I mean, you don't have to do that. Slide this up nice and high, all right? Now as I stand up, okay, using sling mountain a bit as well, I've got all this slack to work with, so I can pull that up and I get loads of mileage. So that was quite a, a worthwhile one, wasn't it? So all that's changed is you've got to put this above the ATC. Now you can do that on the other version as well. You can have the prosic orientation changed. Have a play and see what works for you, right? I prefer the other way that I did before, below the waist belt one, but for this, it's got to be above. So you haven't got any choice for that one. And it works just fine, doesn't it? Okay. It's just going to save you a bit of stress. I'm on proper belay now, right? Because this is like guide mode. It's not just a prosic wrapped around a rope, is it? Still friction, but it's a bit more solid, I reckon. I'm still going to back him up though, for sure I am, right? With that rolling clovitch. I say rolling because you're just moving it all the time. So clip him in as soon as you're a couple of meters up then bang, away you go. Every time you go up a bit, roll it, tighten it, roll it, tighten it, and away you go. And back yourself up, okay? I said before to try turning the other method into an abseil. Well, try the same for this, okay? Try turning this into an abseil, okay? Nice and safely, of course. Just think it through. Do it when there's not much jeopardy. And also think about, and this is going to come into Escaping the System Part 3, whether you can turn an abseil into the ascending version. Because remember, escaping the system part three, we'll be going down to our mate, helping them, and then getting back up to the belay to do something next. 
So actually it's the other way around. So by trying all these different combinations, you'll be like well practiced. And when it comes to escape the system and do something useful, which is a lot of steps, all the little steps, hopefully you've got dialed already. So that'll just make it so much easier. So you remember right back at the beginning of escaping the system part one, I probably rabbited on about having all these different tools in the toolbox, a slightly cringy phrase, isn't it? But it's true, all these tools then come out and we put them in the right order and we get something useful. Okay, this isn't as painful as it looks really. I've got a slight bit of angle, so I'm all right. It could be a lot worse. But there you go, there's the setup. And this is our little cheating method. So it's not really cheating, like I say, but it is definitely more efficient. So go and have a practice at it safely. And ideally in a bit of free space to start with if you can, um, but just go through that, all right. Cool, so let us know how you get on in the comments. It'd be good to hear if you could change it into, uh, into an abcell and vice versa, nice and smoothly. Um, let, let us know. Tag us on Instagram and stuff. Some people have been using the hashtag Sling Mountain. That's been nice to see. It's been a comedy value, isn't it? Uh, if, you, if you share stuff on Insta, I'll reshare it on my stories as well. So it gets you a bit of uh, extra coverage. You never know, you might get another follower out of it or something, as, as I might as well. So it works both ways. It's all good. Um, fire away, any questions you've got on it? As always, of course, happy to answer as best I can. As I've just mentioned, Insta, find us on Facebook as well. Um, give us any suggestions you've got for other videos and all that jazz. Click that like button for us on this video. Click that subscribe button if you haven't already. It is all super, super helpful to me. So uh, thanks in advance for doing that. As always, more videos coming up very soon.